In this video tutorial, we're going to look at a number of different ways of evaluating the efficiency of a diesel engine. We're actually going to use two different methods. First of all, we're going to calculate something called the Carnot efficiency. Now, the Carnot efficiency is the absolute maximum efficiency of any heat engine, and it assumes that we have isothermal processes or constant temperature processes. So it isn't really the best model to evaluate our diesel cycle. The second efficiency we're going to calculate is the ideal diesel efficiency. And this looks more specifically at the diesel cycle, but it still makes various different assumptions, as we'll mention as we go through this tutorial. Now it is worth mentioning that when we look at typical efficiencies of diesel engines, often we see efficiencies of around 30 or 40%. So as the ideal diesel efficiency makes various assumptions, we would expect the value of the ideal diesel efficiency to be above 40%. So pictured on the left hand side of the screen we have the PV diagram for the diesel cycle and directly underneath we have some data that we're going to use to calculate our efficiencies. First of all we have gamma which is the polytropic index for adiabatic processes. Now when we have adiabatic compression and expansion the value of gamma is 1.4. In this example we're going to use a volumetric compression ratio of 16.5 and a beta value of 2.2. Now the beta value is something known as the cutoff ratio, and we're going to be explaining what we mean by cutoff ratio in a moment. We also have maximum and minimum cycle temperatures of 1850 degrees C for the air fuel mixture and 25 degrees C for the air entering the cylinder. So volumetric compression ratio is something that we've seen previously, and we're going to need the volumetric compression ratio in order to calculate our ideal diesel efficiency. All we mean by the volumetric compression ratio is the difference between the volume of air before compression and the volume of air after compression. So we're taking a volume of air V1 and we're reducing that volume of air to a much smaller volume V2. Now as the diesel cycle is compression ignition, we would expect those compression ratios to be relatively high. So in this example, we have a ratio of 16.5. Next, we have the cutoff ratio beta. Now, the cutoff ratio is the ratio of V3 to V2. If we refer to our PV diagram, we can see that V2 is the volume of air prior to combustion, and V3 is the volume of air-fuel mixture after combustion. Now recall that we said that combustion in a diesel engine occurs at constant pressure and for that to be the case the gas must expand. The combustion isn't taking place instantaneously as in the case of the spark ignition engine and in actual fact we're injecting fuel into the cylinder to mix with the air so the combustion takes place at constant pressure and as a result we see this increase in volume. Now that increase in volume is evaluated by our cutoff ratio which is the ratio of the volume after heating to the volume before heating. Noting that that heating has to take place under constant pressure in the diesel cycle. So let's go ahead and calculate our two efficiencies and we're going to start with our Carnot efficiency. Now the only thing that we need to remember when we calculate the Carnot efficiency is that the temperatures must be in Kelvin. So we have one minus T cold. T cold is 25 degrees C. But to convert that to Kelvin, we need to add 273.15 Kelvin. Recall that 0 degrees C is equivalent to 273.15 Kelvin. So our conversion is to add 273.15. On the bottom of that fraction, we have T hot, 1850 degrees C. Again, adding 273.15 to convert that to Kelvin. Now that gives us a Carnot efficiency as a decimal equal to 0 0.8596 or 86.0%. Now, as you've probably seen, the formula for calculating the ideal diesel efficiency appears to be much more complicated. So we just need to take a little bit of care when we input our values. We have diesel efficiency, 
equals 1 minus. Now at the top of our fraction is beta to the power of gamma minus 1. Beta we've said is 2.2. Gamma is 1.4 minus 1, all in brackets. The bottom of our fraction then is beta minus 1. And I'm going to simplify this as I go. Beta is 2.2 minus 1 is 1.2. We've already said that gamma is 1.4. And our volumetric compression ratio is 16.5. We need to raise that volumetric compression ratio to the power of gamma minus 1. Well, gamma is 1.4. 1.4 minus 1 is just 0.4. So you have a choice here. You can either simplify this fraction first of all, or we can input everything we have there into our calculator. Whichever method you choose will yield the same answer. And here we get an ideal diesel efficiency equal to 0.6090 or 60.9%. So as we can see here, when we calculate the Carnot efficiency, we get a much higher percentage efficiency. And that's because the Carnot efficiency is the absolute maximum efficiency of any heat engine, not just an internal combustion engine, as we see here. We then went on to calculate our ideal diesel efficiency, and we see the ideal diesel efficiency coming out at around 60.9%. Once again, that's a little higher, but that's as a result of the assumptions we make where we assume that we have adiabatic compression and expansion, and we also assume that we have constant pressure heating. In reality, the actual efficiency of most diesel engines will sit at somewhere around 40%, and we'll see how that can be determined for two and four stroke diesel engines in a later tutorial.